Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Anas Kosmas. I'm a reader at the Department of Informatics at uh, King's College. And thank you. I'd like to first thank you all for being here to attend this workshop. So, um, before I, um, this is a workshop that is related to our infrastructure project, and I'll talk about it um, and also about the project itself. But before we start, um, I've asked uh, the Dean of Active, uh, the National, Mathema National Mathematical Sciences. Professor Michael Lack and also Professor Barbara Solok, who is going to lead the new Department of Engineering, to open the workshop. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Panos. It's, it's always a, a, a privilege to be able to come and talk very briefly uh, at the start of uh, events like these. Um, uh, although I, always, I also wonder sometimes why, um, why someone like me should, should speak. Uh, I have an answer to that, which is um, really to give a little bit of the context of of how this work is being done, or in which it's being done. Um, King's, as uh, many of you will know, is uh, the fourth oldest university in England, uh, and we have a very rich tradition in science and engineering that includes people like James Clark Maxwell, uh, Charles Wheatstone, John Frederick Daniel, and many more. More, more recently, um, in 2013, I think it was, we have two Nobel Prize winners for physics and chemistry, uh, Michael Levitt and Peter Higgs of the Higgs boson, uh, that we claim as King's students in this particular area. So in terms of science and engineering, um, we are particularly proud of our heritage, um, but also um, of the work that is being done here and now. Uh, this building, interestingly, uh, that you're in today is, is we've had it for about a year or so. It was, when it was built, the most expensive building in the world, but it was also a tribute to, <coughs> a tribute to the relationship between two nations, uh, okay, between the UK and the US. It's fitting, I think, not necessarily the UK and the US, but, but that we think about the relationship between multiple nations in the context of the Global Challenges Research Fund, which is uh, the source of funding for this particular activity in this particular program. Um, in particular, because it does two things. The first is that it reinforces that tradition, that heritage of kings, which is, at least I will characterize as, uh, it's about excellence in research. It's about the highest quality activity that we can do. And that's, that's the primary mission, or one of the primary missions for a, for a university, that we should do the most outstanding research that we can do. But the other thing that I think is absolutely crucial and that the Global, Challenge, Global Challenges Research Fund supports is making a difference. So doing outstanding research is one thing, but something that's very important to us here at King's and in the Faculty of Natural and Mathematical Sciences to do things that make a difference in the real world, to make an impact. And this work has the potential to be uh, transformational, really. Um, I think it's outstanding work, and I think the... The difference that it can make is, is significant, R really powerful stuff. And so my message, I have a message, my message for you all here today is um, make a difference with this work and with other work going forward. And I trust that your day will be productive and informative, uh, and I look forward to seeing what comes out as a result. Thank, Thank you, you Thomas. Thank you very much for coming. And can I also ask Professor Solek to uh, open? Good morning, everyone. And like Michael, I have to say it's a great privilege to stand here and welcome you all <coughs> to King's College this morning, and particularly to discuss the work that you have been doing. As Michael said, King's has a very rich history, particularly in engineering, and he mentioned um, many of the people who discovered some of the fundamental technologies that we use in many of the engineering devices and technologies that we employ today. It's with great, great excitement that we are relaunching our engineering department here at King's, and this summer it will officially come into being again. And why do we look at that with such great excitement? I think what King's can offer, not only is its rich history, is that it's relevance. So the work that you're doing 
as part of the Global Research uh, Challenge Fund, centers around, as Michael said, making a difference. But within that making a difference, you need to contextualize it to have that real impact that Michael mentioned. So it means being aware of the society and the cultures in which these technologies will be deployed. Also understanding the social and economic impacts that that will have. And King sits at the center of one of the largest and most vibrant cities in the world. But within the college itself, we have a number of unique opportunities where we can not only have engineering as a single strong technology and research discipline and education, but we can be informed by the, the college that surrounds us. And what do I mean by that? I mean that in this building, it's shared between informatics and the King's Business School. So we have access to the Business School and the Institute for Entrepreneurship. And we can see here that some startup companies are involved. And again, it's understanding the context of the research we're developing and how it can make real impact. We have a Department of Politics and Policy. Again, when we look at solutions, we also have to contextualize them in terms of the political and the policy environment in which they might be deployed. We have centers that focus on culture and social aspects of different uh, countries. Again, that helps us to understand and deploy the rich research findings that come from projects such as this. We have uh, the largest uh, medical school in the country, perhaps even in Europe, I believe, and we have a dental school. Again, we can find solutions working with our partners there and within the rich community in the medical sciences in London. And we also have a Center for Industrial Strategy. Again, that helps contextualize the work that's done in terms of how it might be deployed to the greater prosperity of the nations that might be using it. So I think I really just want to say that it's a great privilege to see the work that's, that's been going on here, Panos has been sharing with us, about how looking at low-cost devices that can be deployed not only in rural countries, in rural parts of, of large countries, to make a difference for people who have potentially suffered a stroke, to improve the diagnostics then and there when emergency response teams uh, arrive, but also within their treatment within the hospitals. So that is a very, very powerful tool with real impact for those people who don't have access to, to this sort of or, or more expensive equipment that we might have here in London. But also, I don't want to downplay the, the, the real potential of this work in a city like London. Because the, the ability to diagnose, and I'm sure you, you're all very full aware, a stroke in, in a very short time and start the treatment in a short time has real implications, not only for the, the hospital and the costs, but for the individual as well. So we're looking at how to, to deploy the findings that you have to solve solution, to, to solve and help patients in rural environments such as, as in China, but also we can look at how we can deploy these to the betterment of all patients who can suffer a stroke. So it's great to see that King's College is working with their partners in China, the University of Electronic Science and Technology, and the two companies that are here, so again, welcome to MediWise and then also ET Medical from China. So I think you'll have a very exciting day. It's a very packed day, so I hope you enjoy your time. The sun is shining in London, so it's a, it's a nice occasion as well. So thank you very much and enjoy your day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Luck and Professor Solok. They did an excellent job introducing the project, so I don't have to do much. <laughs> so. Um, so I'm going to, so this is um, the program, the, uh, I, I guess I can start with that and then I'll, I will introduce the project and a little bit what microimaging is for us, for, for uh, the audience that may not be familiar. It sort of gives the motivation and the goals of the project. So um, in terms of the workshop, um, there we are, do we have a pointer? Is that a pointer? No. 
Okay. Um, so, so um, I guess I can point to this. So, so there's a, I will introduce, as I said, I'm going to start with an introduction. And then we have experts, uh, I'd like to thank for coming, from the School of Population Health and Environmental Sciences at King's College, Charles Wolf, Anthony Rad, and uh, Jan van Wang, and they will uh, give an um, overview of needs and trends of stroke treatment covering different aspects, and also with a focus a bit on China, which is, uh, as a, I will note, a, a country of focus for this project. Um, and then Dr. David Doig from University College London Hospital will uh, present um, an overview of imaging for stroke detection, so how imaging is done currently, what needs might be there, and this can give a sort of a good background for where m a new technology like microbe imaging might fit in this context. And, and then after the coffee break, we have uh, Professor Francesca Vitiana from Polytechnic of Vittorino, who came all the way from Italy kindly, to discuss uh, her, uh, the development of her prototype. So both of these talks uh, will have some overlap because we have, we have two different groups and we also have friends in collaborating in a European project trying to develop these devices. So Francesca will talk about her work our group's work, and then um, our group will talk about how we are developing the scanner here. Hopefully, it won't be too technical for people who are not working in microwaves, but uh, let's hope, I don't know. And, uh, and then uh, the second part will have more general talks uh, that are re relevant to this project. So um, a collaborator from Medivice, um, Samos Carlos, will discuss an additional technology that could help um, devices like uh, microwave devices for healthcare that is based on this concept of metamaterials. But he will also give a perspective a bit of uh, the industry on that, of a you know, small company trying to uh, hit the, the medical market. Uh, Wending Mai, who will represent also University of Electronic Science and Technology of China, but also ET Medical, will discuss the clinical pathways for microwave imaging in China, uh, regulation, uh, regulatory path. And then we have another, uh, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to also hear from a, um, from a Professor Elizabeth Sklar, who is also here at the Department of Informatics. And she has finished a project um, that discusses more uh, that stroke is one of the uh, sort of therapies or diseases that the project addresses. And it's, uh, it has to do with um, decision support system. So it's a, uh, maybe, I think it's a good complementary work. Um, and after that, we have uh, a short panel discussion, q and A. I don't know if I need to do concluding remarks. I think this will be merged. It's a full day, so let's see how much we can uh, uh, go through all of this. And then the networking event um, after the, the end of the workshop. The breaks and lunch and all of that will be are in the back. Okay, you'll see. You won't miss it. Okay. Um, another notice uh, is that we, you know, we are videotaping this, and we, you know, it would be great if you can return this privacy consent form, signing. If, uh, and if you have any concerns about the videos, then you can also tell us. <laughs>